Oh, hello, and welcome to Pale Air Rewind for April 2021. My name is Jimmy, and this is Poe. <laughs> and no matter how wild and uncertain the past year has been, at least dinosaurs will always be awesome. Once again, we've joined forces with 23 of your favorite paleo YouTubers to bring you the best of the beasts for the year. Now, hopefully, you've just come from a Mega Studios video covering the second half of March 2021. If you haven't seen it yet, truly, it was a fantastic month for Ankylosaurus. <laughs> and since this whole year has rushed by faster than a loose velociraptor in a Florida backyard, we're stoked to bring you some of the most awesome discoveries for the month of April. Kicking off April 1st with fascinating fossil finds that are more ferocious than foolish, in late Cretaceous Patagonia, some of the most diverse and abundant groups of theropod dinosaurs roaming the plains were the abelosaurs. These short-armed, horned-up tooth machines were found in South America, Africa, and India, and included over a dozen varieties, like the Indosaurus and the cannibalistic Majungasaurus, and the classic meat-eating bull, Carnotaurus. On April 1st, we added one more. This is the one who brings great fear, also known as Lucalcan Aleocranianus, also known as. Um, we've got new things like uh, Lucalcan, which means the, the, the one who causes great fear. That's not just another Culkin kid. Exactly. <laughs> there, is a, there is a Culkin who is called Lucalcan. Yeah. Okay. He's, uh, he's the fourth youngest, you and uh, he's, who's always uh, charging up a big bar bill and then just taking off. Its species name translates to the unusual skull, which is right because in addition to having more openings in its skull for blood vessels and nerves, it also had an air-filled middle ear sinus cavity, which hasn't really been seen in any other abelosaurs. And the fact that Luke Culkin and so many other large theropods like it lived in the same area at the same time has scientists curious about whether they competed for the same types of prey. Luke Culkin wasn't the only new dinosaur discovered this month. There were several. We had two new duckbill dinosaurs, like Ornatops incantatus in late Cretaceous New Mexico and Yamatosaurus from late Cretaceous Japan. We also welcome the discovery of Chile's third dinosaur ever, a colossal titanosaur named Aracar licanante, which means the bones of the Atacama in Kunza, the language of the local indigenous tribes. <laughs> to quote Charles Darwin, or maybe it was Vin Diesel, you don't need competition when you've got family. Tyrannosaurs are some of the most popular and recognizable animals of all time. Kids and adults, and even adults who don't pay much attention to paleontology, can easily point at a T-Rex. The only thing that could make the tyrant king more formidable is if there were more of them. A bone bed of four or five tyrannosaurs was uncovered this month in the Kaiparowitz Formation of northern Utah. Now, our friend Stephen from Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong will cover the story of the bone bed of these monstrous murderers, so I'm not going to talk about it. So make sure you check out the YDAW channel at this jump right here. Oh, but I really want to talk about it, though. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. But it's so cool, though. You know what? Go watch Stephen's video and then come back. You won't be disappointed. Go check out what he's done. It's really incredible to see it. We've never made it a secret that even though we love dinosaurs, their fossilized neighbors, the marine reptiles, are pretty awesome too. <laughs> Catherine is particularly fond of mosasaurs, so you can imagine how stoked she was when a new discovery this month revealed a very peculiar behavior in these incredible lizards of the interior seaway. Now, we'll often think of mosasaurs as being massive super predators of the ocean, and scenes like this don't hurt. Did they always spend their time in the salt water? Well, a new study released this month by Leah Taylor, Rebecca Manzoni, Selena Suarez, and more examined the rich oxygen isotopes in the tooth enamel of several mosasaur specimens. Now, because of the density of salt and other minerals in ocean water, the amount of oxygen in a given environment is less than saltwater environments than in freshwater. Which makes sense. If I have two equal amounts of water, and one of them also has a bunch of minerals and salts and other things dissolved into it, then there's not enough room for the exact same amount of oxygen in that amount of water. It's a small difference, but it's significant. And 
it shows up in the tooth enamel of these mosasaurs. Examining the tooth enamel of two different species, like Platycarpus tympanicus and Cladastes propython, particular favorite of mine, it becomes clear to see through lines of arrested growth that these animals would actually travel from their salty domains to freshwater estuaries about every other week. Now, this is not actually uncommon. We see the same thing happening today as an osmoregulatory function of living sea snakes, which leave the ocean and travel into fresh water to drink up some of the good stuff. <laughs> Can we jump back a quick second? Because I'm not done with the Tyrannopac stuff just yet, okay? Because just two days later, a completely separate study released in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology examined the full trackways through the Wapiti Formation of Alberta, Canada and measured the way Tyrannosaur footprints changed as they grew up. From baby's first stomps to shuffling around the late Cretaceous shopping mall at seven o'clock in the morning. The study by Enriquez et al. shows that as they grew heavier and less agile, Tyrannosaurs shifted their body weight from their toes to their heels. Now these tracks likely belong to a group of Albertosaurus or Displetosaurus, and further adds evidence to the shifting perspective of tyrannosaurs as lone opportunistic hunters. Because they lived in groups together. They were pack hunters. It's, it's, go see Steven's video, please. <laughs> go check out his stuff and come back. <laughs> now, our last story for this month's Rewind takes us back into the maw of Tyrannosaurus rex. With a study presented in the Experimental Biology Convention of the American Association for Anatomy. In this practical experiment, John Fortner was able to build computer models of T-Rex jaws from CT scans and 3D photogrammetry and demonstrate for the first time just how a Tyrannosaurus bit into its prey. Tyrannosaurus chomp through bone by keeping a joint in the lower jaw steady, like an alligator rather than flexible like snakes. Specialized bones that cross the joint stiffen the lower jaw. Now, in the complex computer models developed by Fortner, the density of bone, the strength of the muscles, and that world-famous bite force calculate together to show just how much strain the jaws undergo during a chomp. Now, by shifting where the jaw actually hinges, Fortner determined that the bones running along the top of the joint keep the lower jaw in place, dispersing that bite force across the whole jaw and ensuring that T-Rex doesn't bite through its own face. That's pretty awesome, right? <laughs> and believe it or not, this is all just the first half of April. <laughs> Take the next step and jump over to Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong and see the rest of April's ancient antics. Then come on back to the Expe Expeditioner's Discovery Guild Enterprise, or EDGE, to save time, <laughs> and see the whole combined rewind on New Year's Day. And before you go, if you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And check us out at dwaba.org to learn more about the stories behind the bones of your favorite dinosaurs. And remember that no matter what you do, where you're from, or how old you are, dinosaurs 